So the question for today, is Bible school for you? We're going to talk about that and many other things today on the Backshed Bible Study. This is episode number 82. Today is November 15th, 2021. Welcome. And Luke Miller, my guest today. Welcome to the Back Shed. This is like the good old days. I know. Remember the good old days when we were in, when you were in the Back Shed. I was in Canada, and yeah. Except I'm not in a basement. They've let me out. You're I'm not in a basement. basement anymore. You are. You're. You're in your uh, your um, studio north. We're going to call this today. Exactly. Sunrise Studio North. There you are. Yeah. It's uh it's a lot colder than I remember. It's <laughs> so so what was what was this like for you going back and um and it's not even winter yet. No, it's not. Uh they everybody tells me it was nice up until when I arrived. And I don't believe them like at all cuz I walked out to 10 degrees blowing snow. It was like a bit of freezing rain as well and just a nightmare. And so, again, they say I brought it with me and I say that's impossible because I know where I came from and it's not where cold air comes from. Maybe maybe God's just angry at you for having left Canada and is punishing (laughs) somebody. Yeah, punishing Saskatchewan. Now, that's just a normal Saskatchewan day in November. It's... Oh, yeah. So, and there was a football game on, a, a Canadian football game oh. on that was like, they played it. It was 10 degrees outside and just, yeah. Well, um, I uh, I was at a football game yesterday. A How real about football. that? Yeah. A real? <laughs> yeah. With four I downs. I don't know. Frankly, I don't know that our game was a real game. The, <laughs> yeah. the, the Eagles showed up, but apparently the Broncos did not show up at this game. Yeah, yeah. There were people on the field, but whether the game was being played by all is a different story. Oh, uh, so you and I are both, uh, we were both gone yesterday. Yeah. And you're in Canada. I was in Colorado and I got to spend a great weekend with my mom and I took my son Titus out there. We caught a Broncos game and and of course, this is this was kind of a fun little little bonus as I posted it on Facebook and my dad's first cousin sends me a Facebook message saying, hey, my son is over in section 106, row 17. So right. I, I go over there at halftime and get to see my second cousin who I hadn't seen in like 20 years. So <laughs> there That's you go. Hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, well, we, yeah. we flew home last night and um uh, I may have a few bags in my eyes there, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and have a scratchy voice from uh, yelling. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell it's it's been you've been at a football game. We had a we had. I'll, I'll stop talking here in a second. But we had some Eagles fans sitting all around us. Actually, there was really a, there were a lot of Eagles fans at this game, and uh, which is awful. But um, they're obnoxious and and i have good friends that are eagles fans and i don't think they're this obnoxious but this gal and her husband and their baby brought their baby but she went to cheer for something that we did bad or they did good and her beer flew all over titus no apology nothing he left the game in tears oh really we're it was a little bit of a sour ending, but uh, so you Eagles fans out there, Philip and whoever else is an Eagles fan there. That's my friend. <laughs> Time to make amends. You're going to pay. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, Luke, um, yeah. man, it's uh, it's kind of fun to be back here in this uh, old environment. You what are you doing in Canada? I am in the province of Manitoba. I am in Swan River, Manitoba, home to the most northern golf course in Manitoba that has grass greens. Uh, Although it's closed for the season, but. (laughs) Right. Okay. So what are non-grass greens? Oh yeah. This is great question. People find this hard to believe when I tell them about this down in California. So when you've got small towns, um, they'll have, golf courses because someone will give them a track of land and they'll build a golf course mostly it's kind of like 
cow pasture, uh, cow pasture grass or whatever, but it's a golf course. But one of the most expensive things on a golf course to maintain is the greens. Um, and so what they do is they actually have sand greens. And so they take, <laughs> they take usually tractor oil, old tractor oil, and they put it on the sand um, and they actually cut a dip down. So it dips about, the green actually goes down like in a full cut around four inches. So once you land it on the green, you stay on the green. Um, and the sand is thicker, so it rolls. Um, and so you putt from a sand green. And, and, and the oil binds it. So it's right. puttable. And, and you, but when you leave, there's a heavy carpet or a, a big metal rod and you have to rake and smooth out in a circle the green before you move on to the next hole. Like you would in a sand trap. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so sand greens are a thing. I you haven't experienced golf I, you experience sand greens. You know, I, I've played a, a tennis on a grass court, but I don't think I would compare that. No, because usually that usually means you're at a nice club. It was, it's exactly <laughs> not was. not a town of three hundred in the Canadian prairies. <laughs> oh my goodness! So what are you doing in Canada? Yeah, so I am. I'm up teaching at a Bible college, Living Word Bible College, up here in Swan River, Manitoba, uh, and and I am teaching Pentateuch this week, which is uh, the first five books of the Bible, and that's uh, and I've been. I've been at this Bible college now for probably about 12 years. Uh, and they were the first college when I was working on my master's degree or just finished my master's degree. And they were the first college that ever gave me a teaching job to come up and teach for a, as a um, adjunct professor at the time. And I actually still have the little certificate uh, or my first contract of, of being a, uh, teaching biblical studies. And so I, I function as kind of one of the, the key people in the Old Testament department up here. Uh, and, and I organize the academics for, for the college. Um, but I always told them, they, cause as they gave me that first shot, you know, a long time ago, if I'm ever, <laughs> I would say ever in the area or ever able, uh, no one's ever just in this area. <laughs> and so, right, uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, but if I'm ever able to, it's kind of my way of being able to give back, you know, years down the road of them having faith and putting trust in me to teach, you know, the Bible and, and me, you know, being thankful for it and being able to come back and, and do that. That so, is, that's fantastic. Yeah. So it's, it's good. And I'm, you know, I'm, I was kind of telling the Sunday night chapel this uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking there bef the, the week before I left and I was kind of sharing with them. It is a different hat that I wear, right. Where right. it's, you know, I'm, I'm used to kind of doing a multitude of different things, you know, obviously preaching on Sunday and, but yet I also function as an adjunct professor at a bunch of different seminaries and universities kind of around the world from uh, in Canada to the U S to Israel. So um, amazing. Yeah. How, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. So it, it, it's a fun little shift in, in schedule kind of thing where, I mean, full disclosure, Sunrise, when I get back on Sunday, I'll probably sound a little lectury because I've been standing behind a lectern uh, for the last, last week lecturing on, on Old Testament and Semitic languages and all that fun stuff. But it's, um, but it's fun to do it. And it's, uh, I, I see a very big importance in, you know, we... I teach on Sundays and our goal is to equip and support the church. And I think one of the key things in doing that as well is being able to equip and support future pastors of the church as they go uh, through ministry training and, and that. So, so that's what I, you know, I'm up here doing that all this week. It's a modular course, which means, uh, you know, eight, nine in the morning, or seven in the morning, California time, as I've been still trying to <laughs> figure that one out. And, uh, and, and yeah, we just, I just teach during the day and, and work with the students in the afternoons. And so, yeah. so what kind of students, what, what kind of students do you all have there? Are they, you know, trying to figure out their life or they want to be pastors? They, 
it's it's an eclectic group and it's a very multicultural group as well in in the class i'm teaching this week we've got people we got two kids uh from jamaica we have an american we have uh, a girl who's from Argentina, but whose mom was actually at Sunrise on last Sunday. Uh, <laughs> so, um, what was that? Where? I, how did that work? You know, I don't even know how it how it worked. Uh, maybe that's some advanced researching on your professor for the week. I'll tell you that. But um, they're from that area. Been in and and they are uh, Argentinian but also uh, Ukrainian. And so there's a large Slavic community yep. in, in the Sacramento area. And so there's a connection there. And I think they were looking and, and arrived that, at sunrise. That is beyond random. I know, right? So uh, it is actually your guest from last week, I think, Luce Johnson, who was uh, who came to, to me and, or came to Sarah and was like, is Luke teaching in Swan River? Cause I was teaching, I was sitting next to a lady whose daughter's in Swan river at that, that college is so, so random. So we got some from Argentina, some from Ukraine, obviously from Canada, American, Sri Lanka. Um, it's a really a eclectic, um, group that we we've got, uh, and it's, it's good. So, um, and, it, and, some are, oh, we've got someone who's in a First Nation, like from a remote First Nations reserve uh, up here who's want, wanting to, who's currently a pastor, wants more training uh, in that. And so he's, he's joined us. So it, it really is a group of just very local to worldwide. Um, and, and also a group of people who are wanting to take a year and study the Bible yeah. and people who are wanting to take three years and go into ministry full time. So, okay. So you might have, you might have someone that's just, Hey, I want to grow in my biblical knowledge. And so I'm just going to go do Bible school for a year. Yeah. And that's how I got into Bible school as well. Uh, I, my grandma had said uh, that she would pay for one year of Bible college and and it just so happened that my worship pastor at the time uh, had, I was in Australia, my worship pastor had left the church and actually gone to teach at Briarcrest. And he emailed me and, and said, you should come out here. And I ended up going out there because I knew I had one year of Bible college that my grandma would pay for. And, and one year turned to two, which turned to three, which turned to four, which turned into another like six more years and a PhD. But, and you met your <laughs> wife there too. And so. I met my wife there, right? And so, so is that why they called it a Briarcrest Bridal College? Is that what it's? Yep. Ring, ring by spring or your money back. Money back. <laughs> we had that at Biola too. Yep. So at Briarcrest, we always envied Biola. It, we thought of it as like the Briarcrest of the South, you know, somehow like halfway when winter hit in Saskatchewan, there's this realization that uh, wait, there's Bible colleges that are near a beach. <laughs> that seems like uh, we did not do enough research. Well, well, to be to be fair, all of my friends that went to Briarcrest did not graduate from college with debt, so uh, yeah. that was a yeah. uh, really I, positive thing. You know, I've I've told people down at Bible. You know, when I talk to kids about Bible college down at Sunrise, and I talk to their parents. I, I always pitch it in the way where I'm like, listen, how would I get you a 30% discount right off the top? Just because, you know, I know people. Just you know, because you know me. Yeah. You know, 30% <laughs> right off the top. How does that sound? Uh, that sounds great. All right. That's the exchange rate. But, you know, it's <laughs> so, so, you know, um, and, and I see the importance of it. I mean, because it, it gives you a good chance, you know, you go for a year, it gives you a chance to see even scripture differently and dive deeper into it. I, we look at Pentateuch that I'm teaching and, and so much of it is filled with the stories that we've heard in Sunday school growing up, you know, Adam and Eve and, and Abraham and, and Joseph and this flood story, you know, and Noah and, and all of that. And it allows us to take a lot more of a deeper look into to all of that yeah. and, and, and bring, I like to hope 
to bring it to life, especially as I told them in this class this week. It's, I realize that I'm teaching a course that within its course, we have to go through the book that everyone says is the book that prevents them from reading the whole Bible. Right. Leviticus. So, uh, so I got, my job is to bring Leviticus to life, which it, I think obviously I'm biased in this, but I think it is a very easy thing to do with all the festivals and all this stuff. But I, 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 I would agree. And I have actually probably struggled more in the book of numbers than I have in the book of Leviticus, but that's a whole nother story for a different day. Yeah. I mean, and I think part of it too, is seeing how it all works together and how it all blends together and, and, and realize that this is the foundations of discovering right. who God is like so much about uh, what I love about the journey of, of Genesis and Exodus, especially is a journey that each and every one of us have been through, which is discovering who God is, right? right. When you think that Abram went, would return to Bethel every year because he, he would go to Bethel, which means or translated Beit El, which is house of God. He went there because he thought that's where God lives in that geographical location. Right. Right? Like this is him discovering and, and Israel as a nation discovering how big God is, how sovereign God is, how just God is from their time in the wilderness, yet how loving God is with the promises that he's, he fulfills. So, so I, even as you can tell, as I'm talking about this, you know, I, I, I think it's easy to bring to life. It's somehow sometimes convincing others, you know, just how, how alive uh, the, the Pentateuch is. So. I, I think the Pentateuch in particular, I, my son this morning, who's going to Capitol um, for high school, Peter uh, said he has a, a project for Bible class. He has to write a five paragraph essay from the Pentateuch of a story which applies to the rest of his life. And, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, and he's kind of scratching his head what to do. I'm like, man, this is, this is good stuff. Let's start with sin. Let's yeah. start with, Oh yeah. You know, let's what go to I, Joseph. Let's go to, you know, all kinds of, kinds of things. I mean, Deuteronomy, like chapter 30 uh, and, and through the end from 28 through the end is, is like Moses looking back on his life, writing like his memoir in a sense of, of a quick history of where he's been with God, where he's been through. Right. And, and kind of that moments where we need to take time and reflect of where God's taken us through, you know, right. And the ups, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it kind of thing. There's, there's a lot in there. And then so much of, of Sunday school stories are, are in there as well. You know, and, oh, I, I, I love it. And, and in so many ways, I feel like um, the, the more you study, especially just the broader old Testament, I think you see the the story of God's grace. You know, when you when you when you look at it from uh, the New Testament perspective, you see it in the individual form, and you see God's grace on me, a sinner, and yet you see God's grace on Israel, a nation, a sinful nation, um, time and time again in the Old Testament, and you know, and, and God gives them. God is not the God of second chances. He's the God of, you know, 15th chances and so yeah. many, so well, on. The, the way I, the way I, I, I tell it, uh, and this is me nerding out a little bit here, not only in Bible, but also in Star Wars is, is the, the way we kind of approach it sometimes is, is the way when you look at Star Wars and that very original one, Star Wars, you, you watch that and you think that this is a story about Luke Skywalker, Right. And, and that's sometimes what we read as we read the Gospels and the New Testament. This is a story of Jesus, right? But then as you read, as you read from the very, all the movies and you put it all together, you see it's the story of Anakin, you know, and, and his journey through everything. And you see that this is a much bigger storyline. And what you think was so small when you're like, okay, well, this is just about Jesus. You see, okay, this is, this is God's great creation and his sovereignty and his providence and, and everything that goes with it. Uh, the first time I told that, I, I thought I was super clever and told it to a class and not one person had seen Star Wars. They were all Ukrainian. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> completely over their heads. And I was just like, nailed it. <laughs> so, I, uh, well, you and Matt Bach need to have that conversation because I, I think he would be right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, <laughs> yeah. I, 
you know, from my experiences with Matt is it's, you know, he's just as passionate about the old Testament as, as I am. So yeah, he just got back from Israel too. So, um, okay. So, so our, our question, I think uh, to put before people today is what is the value of a biblical, I think you said a biblical post-secondary education. That's a very academic uh, phrase yeah. right there. Uh, but, you know, Christian, or I should say uh, Bible college, Christian college, uh, and all that, what's, what's the value of this? You know, I think, uh, I think there's great value in it, whether you're deciding to go into ministry or not. Uh, and and I went as, again, a person who went not planning on going into ministry or, and then went for worship, worship arts and uh -huh. music and ended up in languages and Old Testament, which is its own backshed for another day. But we can do that. But it was a um, uh, so often like I, I feel sometimes we scratch a surface. Right. And. And, and I think it's good. It's the same thing with also trips. I'll throw in trips to Israel as w along with this. Right. Is when you go deeper into it, it becomes more alive. And, and it also helps from an apologetic standpoint and understanding different points of view on how people interpret it, um, and interpret the Bible and allow you to formulate using biblical truth, uh, how to, you know, counter those arguments. Um, and, and it allows you to, you know, not only read God's words, read the, the history of, of how people have interpreted God's word, um, as you look at, at theologians, but it gives you a chance to really do a deep dive into God's scripture, being taught by professors who have dedicated their lives into right. interpretation on specific areas. And, um, and I think the other component that we sometimes forget is also just the general community. Uh, atmosphere of uh, of Bible college, and yes, there's living on the dorms, but it is that biblical community. I still keep in contact with my friends uh, you know, that I was on my dorm with, uh, you know, at Briarcrest, uh, and uh, and and when you look so often in the way that biblical community is formed, you look at where most likely John the Baptist was pre coming out of the wilderness, probably with the Aseans uh, uh, down by where the Dead Sea Scrolls are and, and our groups working with scribes uh, and, and writing out God's word and spending time in God's word in kind of in these cohorts to, to Jesus and the 12 disciples, to the, the disciples themselves and meeting and gathering together and, and being trained. And um, if you look at the prophets, uh, it was widely known that Isaiah and Jeremiah, like if you were a prophet, you had like a prophetic school with you of scribes and, and followers who were learning from you uh, as, as you were going. And so the model is one that's, I think, very biblical, um, but it, from the sense of that community aspect uh, as well. That's huge. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, I still have some of my closest friends from college that you can easily go back to and, and we keep in touch. And I, yeah, there, there's, there's nothing quite like it, especially in that uh, key time in life before you launch into the big bad world, so to speak. Uh, yeah. It's really good to understand what biblical community looks like. And then you kind of see some people not quite behaving like they should. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's always there's always that. I mean, I think the I think the reality, too, is is like if you are know you're going in to be a nurse or a teacher or, you know, any profession, you know, year of Bible college is a chance for you to get a little more grounded because when you go to a secular university, you're going to hear a lot of ideas. And if you don't know how to counter them, if you don't know how to, to formulate a logical biblical argument, you know, against that, then some of the things that you hear, then it can really wreck you, you know, yeah. in, in many ways. And I've seen it happen. Um, and so I think there's that, well, I guess you would call like that due diligence where you're like, right. I want to be prepared to go out into the world. I don't want to be afraid to go out into the world, but I also want to be equipped to go out into the world and whatever profession I may find myself in. So you, that kind of sparked a, a thought from, <coughs> excuse me, sparked a thought for me, Luke. Um, when, uh, do you see a lot of students that come through and just do a year 
of uh, Bible college, then head off to a uh, you know, secular university, that kind of thing? We do. Uh, well, so depends what college I'm at. Um, okay. Where we are here, I think there is an abnormal uh, retention rate from first year to second year. But most of the Bible colleges that I'm at, you see a, a large drop in after first year. You know, say if there's 100 yeah. students, maybe about 50 will continue on into second year. Uh, but once they're in second year, they're really there. You don't see a drop off from second year right. to third year to fourth year. It's once they're usually there, they're there for whatever, whether it's uh, finding a spouse, whether it's getting that ministry degree, whether it's getting, uh, well, yeah. I always laugh, but you lived in San Di- in the San Diego area for a little while years ago. Yeah. Um, Point Loma Nazarene University which is on the ocean down there in San Diego. <laughs> I mean, like literally right That's not there. Bible college. <laughs> oh, no. It's a net. Anyway, um, yeah. we, we don't need to talk about that part, but <laughs> they have a crazy attrition rate from freshman to sophomore year because so right. many kids just come down there and they, and they put all, this is, this is what they do, Luke. This is, I don't know that this is a good strategy or not, but they put all the freshmen boys in the dorm that is closest to the ocean that is down at the bottom of the hill. That's right (laughs) by the surf, you know, and it's like, I can only imagine these boys like open up their blinds, look out and like, forget school. I'm going surfing today. I know. Right. I, that was, I, I credit Saskatchewan with my rise in academics because what else are you going to do? When I was in Victoria, I was like, someone would call me up and say, want to go golfing? And yeah, I can do that in December. When I'm in Saskatchewan, golf season ends in October in like hard stop, you know, and, and there's, and when you're in a town of, you know, 1500 people, that's including the students, uh, there's not a lot to do. And so you nope. might as well just study. And so, I mean, don't get me so wrong. The, the lesson for today is, If you want to succeed in Bible college, go somewhere where the weather is not great and there's, you know, nothing uh, picturesque around. Most of the most successful Bible colleges in Canada are in the middle of nowhere. That is. It's like in small towns in just in the middle of nowhere where it's just the college. Um, And and the ones that um, have the more difficult time are the ones where you find yourself in like a larger city. But most of those ones in the city are kind of like university colleges, you know? And but so I, I think that is kind of life in general. I mean, yeah. we just have, when there are distractions around. There's options, right? There's always going to be something better. Totally. Yeah. So it's, I, I think it's, I, I tell parents, I tell grandparents, you know, it is one of those things that I think is is worth it. Obviously I'm slight. Well, actually, I'm not slightly biased because I I teach here. I teach because I believe in it. That's more of yeah. the thing is I I go and I teach because I see, I believe that if if students uh, see that their pastor, you know, puts a priority in biblical education and teaching right. future pastors and teaching people, then, you know, hopefully that they're able to see that as well and participate in it. I also see that it's important for me to train the next generation of pastors who are coming up. And so, so that's kind of, you know, so it really isn't me biased. It's just my philosophy on ministry is it's like, if you know where your heart is, you go. And, you know, if you want to see, you know, youth and other generations uh, get biblical training, then you have to show that you're also invested in biblical training. So, so I think, and I, and I'd say you'd already answered this question, but I'm going to ask it directly anyway. What do you do with the argument that says by going to a Christian college or a Bible school that I, in in essence, I am removing myself from the world. I'm not, I'm putting myself into a bubble uh, that is just a little small Christian world and I'm not dealing with reality. Yeah. Well, I think the big, the, the key point in that is that it's a season, right? And you're really not, I mean, when you look at, even if you just use Jesus and his disciples as a model, right? They were with Jesus in this closed circle group and he would send them out and they would come back and there'd be more teaching. And, and that was kind of how the flow of his, his teaching went. Uh, and, 
when you look at a Bible college, like for example, here, like you have that opportunity where, um, yes, they are learning during the week, but they're also volunteering at churches out in the real world. It's not like on Monday morning, they arrive and we, we lock down the campus right. and, and they're stuck there for the sem- the rest of the semester. It's, it's training them both in academics and the practical side of things. So we've got people serving in youth groups and we got people serving in worship ministry and, and it's giving you that chance to feel, to go out and come back and realize, Hey, I could have done some things better. Here's right. some things I would tweak. Let me study some more and, and get better at it and develop those skills and hone in on those skills. Uh, so, you know, I think, I, I kind of think that argument is really a tough one to, to make when you, when you realize that almost all of these colleges and, and Bible colleges are requiring field education, right? It, it, the stuff that practical stuff that's happening yep. out in the world. Uh, and so much of it is built off of Jesus model of disciples of sending them out, bringing them back, teaching, equipping, correct. Well, that was, that was exactly what I was going to say. I, when, one of the things I loved at Biola is that every one of us was required to have a Christian service off campus that we were involved in, whether that was being involved in a youth group or, you know, working at a shelter or whatever it was. And, uh, and then, you know, also I, I was a business major at Biola, which for all of you who don't know that your executive pastor was a business major. Fun fact. Uh, fun fact. Had no clue what I was going to do with it, but hey. Uh, but I also loved that we in our in our business department, we were dealing with like a lot of secular companies. Like our business department went out of the way uh, to connect us with uh, projects that you know, would analyze a, a local secular company or that kind of thing. And so we were uh, interacting with people in the world and, and uh, hopefully getting to be a little bit of salt and light. It was a lot of fun. But, yeah. That's, and that's just it. What better way to, you know, equip people to go out and make an impact in their, like what we always talk about in their neighborhoods or communities in their workplaces yeah. is, is for them to feel equipped when they go there. And, and this is a great, great way to do it. Like we need more Christian business leaders, you know, and right. And in every, in every need, area, in, in every government. Area. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, let me, let me, uh, let's uh, kind of circle around here and get ready to land the plane. Speaking of landing planes last night, wow, it was foggy here in Sacramento. Yeah, that's what I've heard. We never, we never saw light of Sacramento until we saw the lights of the uh, airplane hitting the runway last night. Didn't even know we were going to be on the ground and we touched down. Anyway, sorry, I get stuck in my aviation stuff, Luke. You just got to. It's all right. I, it was my dream. So it's I'm fine with those things. So how do we, um, you know, I'm sitting out. Okay. Let's, let's, let's suppose two different people that are watching. We have our, our typical audience, which um, are like your mom, <laughs> mom and Donna and some others. And, and someone might be saying, you know, I've kind of moved on, uh, but you know, how does this apply to me? And I, like, I even think of answering that to say, you know, how can you, um, that if you're maybe a little older, you've already had a, you, you've already gone through your education years and you might be in the retirement years, you might be able to help one of your grandkids get through college. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But uh, what's, a, what's a response point uh, to this? What's a challenge that we can put out to people uh, towards a, a biblical education? Well, I think for those people who are older, I, I say it's never too late to just take a course. You know? I love um, that you said that. I was hoping you would say that. I, I think of my one grandma who was like 89 or something, and she took out a college math course because she wanted to keep her mind sharp. Uh, so she took out a college distance learning math course and like aced it. Uh, That's awesome. And, uh, but But I think for... I mean, most colleges do that. We do this. We like up here, we offer, you know, distance learning um, options that really allows you to flow through different topics. But like even from around the region where we are in Sacramento, you know, William Jessup offers right. an evening class where you can dive into Pentateuch or historical books or biblical archaeology and 
um, and, and take a course that you're interested in. If you're interested in archaeology, go take an archaeology course and, and see how that will affect your, your biblical worldview as you start to get your hands dirty, you know, with uh, archaeology and discovering the historicity of the Bible, you know, Ooh. and yeah, so, um, so, so that's, you know, that one thing, you know, for, for grandparents and parents, I, I love the idea of, of saying, offering that, hey, we'll provide, we'll be able to financially help you in some way with um, going to a Bible college for a year and, and, and just to help ground, ground them right. for whatever's next, whatever they may go. And who knows what it, like, look at my story, who knows where it may lead. And, and so that's, that's the one component of it. You know, if you're older and you're, you're thinking about that. Uh, the other is if, if you're a parent that's forcing your kid to watch this now, cause you think you should be, they should be going to Bible college. Uh, right. um, this will bring a whole new demographic to this show uh, is um, I think I, I know it's important to go. Uh, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that that it was. And uh, and and yet, taking that first step, there's so many good programs out there, uh, and there's so many good programs that whether you want something formal like Jessup or up here at Living Word, um, or something that involves a lot more teaching and a lot more going out, like Cape and Ray Ministries is right. a great one April, around the world. April did Cape and Ray years ago. That was yeah. amazing. You go for six months, uh, and usually three of those months are you studying through the Bible, and then another three months are you on the mission field. Yeah, and and so it's you want to take a big step in your faith. I think biblical education and and finding ways to live it out is that's the first way way to do that. And um, and so I would encourage people to do that, uh, and because there's just so many benefits to it. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is really good. Now you've motivated me. I think I'm going to, uh, I've got a, I've got a Bible college president. That's a friend of mine that I'm going to see if he'll come join us, uh, one of these days. Legit. This is uh eternity Bible college when Francis Chan found it. Oh, nice. Uh, down in Southern California, but, um, uh, we're going to see if we can get Spencer on here. Nice. Um, yeah. I think, one of the the challenges that a lot of people do, I I went to Biola. It was not cheap. It's way not cheaper now than it was back then. Way more expensive. There's the correct words. Um, it was worth it to me, and uh, in in so many ways of becoming biblically grounded. Um, now and now when I'm t I'm talking to the 18 year olds right now. It was uh, it was worth every penny to me to become grounded, to understand the Bible, to be given um, hermeneutics, you know, the the study of biblical interpretation, to be able yeah, to tools, yeah. accurately study the Bible and um, and know the different Bible study methods and so on. And and so I'd put a challenge out there, even if you just do it for a year to to help in that grounding time, but do it my challenge would be to do it first, not to wait to do it later. Um, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and if you don't mind me putting in a plug here, uh, when we talk about, because like I said, you get a 30% discount in just by crossing the border uh, with, uh, with the exchange rate. But, you know, one of the reasons why I, I love this college, and I, I teach at a whole bunch and at, also secular universities as well. But I come back to this small little Bible college because I believe their philosophy and their ministry here is important. So during COVID, um, they had a nice donor base uh, and they realized that um, like with everything coming down and people or people not being able to work, it would be very difficult to run things. And so they made this extraordinary statement of they would offer free education for the 2020, 2021 year, uh, completely free. Um, and that included room and board. Uh, so, um, that, that's just astounding. That's it's unheard yeah. of. It was, it was where they said, God hasn't given us the financial 
you know, enough finances uh, through this time where we've, we've been able to see growth, but we don't want to plant our talents in the sand. So we want to be able to train people wow. even through this difficult time. And, and even now, as we are in the 21, 22 year, um, it is as far as bang for buck goes, it is like, it's $9,000 for the year. Um, and that's room and board included. That's your right. meal. Oh that is your education. Now translate that from Canadian dollars to American dollars. And you can see why we've got some, we've got Amer Americans here as well, but yeah. it's such a good deal. Now, again, you find yourself into the, uh, uh, you find yourself in a place where it gives you a chance to learn in a, a remote location but it also allows you to focus on Bible and right. allows you to, to focus on some of the things that are, you know, why you're actually going to Bible college. Right. And so, so yes. So there, there's my plug. For I love it. Living Word Bible college. You can go to www.livingwordcollege.com. I've got to put that uh, and, in the show notes. Yes. And, uh, uh, and yeah. And, and, you know, most of the, most of the professors here are actually right from the region, but we, we actually, there's one that actually comes from Sacramento as well, not me <laughs> that, um, uh, but it's, it's good Bible teaching. It is, it's solid Bible teaching. You go through the whole Bible in your time that you're here. And so, you know, that you're going to come out with uh, a good education. So there's my, my plug for today. Uh, and you know, I'm, I, the le lesson starts up again in about 15 minutes here. And I, I turn back into professor Luke and I would, I would love to, uh, to sit in on one of your classes. So, um, we'll have to, uh, no. yeah. All right. Yeah. So that is living word Bible college in Swan river, Manitoba, livingwordcollege.com. Looked it yeah. up on the web. Good job. Yeah. We're there. And, and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, and there's lots of Bible colleges out there and I teach it a lot and there's a lot of good solid ones call Bible colleges, seminaries, for people who are um, wanting to move on into a different profession, wanting to be in ministry, wanting to just be in a biblical community and get more grounded in the year, you know, there's a lot of options out there and it's worth looking in them. Well, and, and I think it's worth even mentioning uh, today that in, in our current culture, there is becoming less and less of an emphasis on having the piece of paper and more and more of an emphasis on, you know, have you learned, have you learned in a practical way? I know that people are not asking so much for the master's degree, although they don't, they really do like seeing the education, but it's not necessarily, you know, having that, that, uh, that master's degree or, or whatever. So yeah, more letters at the end of your name, <sighs> right? So I have none. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I do. I don't know. I got to find that out. Um, Luke, good time today. It's good yeah. to see you. Thanks for having me uh, all the way, all the Thousands way up here. Of miles I'm away. glad the internet worked. <laughs> it's like, that was my biggest worry is that it was going to be like a snowstorm in the internet or something. Was well, the, the worst thing that happened was I couldn't get the thing to work live on uh, Facebook, but you know, people will forgive us. So uh, you want to, you want to pray us out here as we, uh, sure. as we head out? Yeah, you bet. Let's, uh, let's pray. God, I just thank you for today. I just thank you that we can come from two very different locations and just talk about your word and, and biblical education, God. And I just pray that that as people hear this, uh, you may stir something in them that that says, you know, maybe I do want to support one of my grandkids or, or my kids or, or, or maybe saying, I, maybe I do want to take a course and discover uh, a bit more about an area that I'm passionate about in the Bible. Uh, and so, God, we just... Uh, Ask for your guidance in that. Ask you soften our, our hearts and our ears to hear what we need to hear. And so we just thank you for our time together and the week that we've got ahead, uh, wherever we may be. And so we just pray these things all in your holy and amazing name. Amen. Amen. And please bless Luke and his teaching. Look forward to yeah. uh, you getting a uh, swift trip back and we I see know. you Sunday morning. I'll be. I'll I am be. praying very diligently <laughs> that you are there. <laughs> that you make all your flights on Saturday. I know. I'm uh, uh, I'm gonna be raring to go. So it's 
early Saturday morning I leave. So uh, it'll be good. It'll be good to have you back home. So thank you, Luke. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll see you next week back here on the back shed at 10 AM, hopefully live on Facebook. Otherwise don't forget to catch our podcast version of this. You can subscribe to it on iTunes and wherever else you find your podcasts, as well as the Luke Miller podcast on Thursdays on Thursdays. All right. Yeah. See you everybody.